opportunity for me to speak here. Uh, I'll talk about an application of mayor Torres sequence to SPD phases, symmetry protected topological phases. Uh, first, let's remind ourselves um, what SPD phases are. So uh, we can roughly divide phases of matter into symmetry breaking phases and uh, uh, phases that do not uh, break symmetry. Uh, and among the second category, in the second category, we have different topological orders. Uh, and those can be divided roughly into uh, those that are long range entangled and those that are short range entangled. Uh, so SPD phases fall into the short range entangled uh, category. Uh, and there are many familiar examples of SPD phases. Uh, for instance, uh, in the fermionic case, we have topological insulators, topological superconductors. In the bosonic case, we have uh, this uh, famous 1D AKLT chain, which has SO3 symmetry. Uh, there are also many uh, trisodium SPD phases, uh, which they exist uh, in both bosonic case and fermionic case. So um, in a series of talks, Kitai argued that uh, uh, even though we may not know the classification of SPD phases for every given symmetry in every given dimension, uh, we can argue that the classification is not nevertheless described by uh, something called a generalized cohomology theory. Uh, for those who have never heard of ter the term, uh, generalized cohomology theory is uh, basically a concept that's more general than uh, the ordinary cohomology theory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, these examples, which we see in physics, like group cohomologies, group super cohomology, uh, and also cohomism, Tay theory, which is used in uh, topological insulator classification, they are all examples of generalized cohomology. Uh, more precisely, uh, the statement is that uh, SPD phases with symmetry G in dimension D uh, is given by the generalized cohomology theory uh, of degree D uh, evaluated at uh, BG, which is, uh, which is called the classifying space of G. Uh, and there are several ways of writing the same thing. Uh, the one that will be relevant to us is the last expression. Uh, uh, we can use that expression when we think about space group. Here, the space group is a semi-direct product of uh, translation group and the point group. So in this talk, we will focus on uh, SVD phases with translation symmetry and reflection symmetry. Uh, so here Z is the translation symmetry in a certain direction, and Z2R is the reflection symmetry in the same uh, direction. Uh, so following the above formula, we can write this in terms of uh, generalized cohomology theory uh, as such. I'm sorry, does the lower index stay for the coefficients of the theory? Uh, the lower index, ZR2, is it the coefficient? Uh, so that's... <laughs> actually uh, an equivalent generalized cohomology theory. It means there is a group that acts on the space here. So... But, but then is, it, is it like a homology with coefficients in that group or it's something else? Uh, it's not a coefficient. Oh, I see. Um, also, um, so you said, pointed it out for space groups that are semi-direct product. Does this work for non-small non cases? It does. It does. Uh, for simplicity, I... So it's part of the symmetry, right? It's part of the symmetry of this. Uh, yes. Uh, you, you, so actually, as like shown here, you can always absorb the substrate into the uh, space you're considering. Uh, uh, anyways, so uh, what we'll do is to use the plane at the top uh, to relate classifications for three different symmetries. Uh, translation, uh, 
semi-direct uh, reflection. Second symmetry is only reflection. And the third symmetry is no symmetry at all. Why is it not C to the D, but to C? Uh, C to the D. The translation. Oh, uh, for simplicity, we just consider one translation. But we can't generalize it. OK, so uh, uh, we'll use the following fact. Uh, every uh, generalized cohomology theory admits something called a mayor real torus exact sequence, uh, something like this. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard of exact sequence, uh, it is a sequence of uh, maps between abelian groups such that uh, the image of the previous map is the kernel of the next map. Uh, so this kind of mathematical objects can uh, allow us to determine certain terms of the sequence from other terms. Uh, that's the main use of uh, an exact sequence. Uh, so okay. So in the case of uh, uh, SPD faces with translation and reflection symmetry, recall uh, we have S1, which is the circle. Um, and we will apply the mayor victorious sequence by decomposing the circle into two semicircles, uh, X and Y. Uh, and the intersection of X and Y is uh, something like that. So we can plug this into the mayor victorious sequence we will replace x by this semicircle, y by that semicircle, and the other terms uh, accordingly. We will also replace uh, the point group P by uh, Z2, the reflection. So we do some substitution. Uh, and after that, we rewrite uh, the mathematical objects as classifications of SPD faces. Uh, as a result, we will yeah, something like this. And here, uh, crucially, we see that we have obtained an exact sequence that involves uh, classifications for uh, translation, semi-direct reflection. There is also classification without symmetry. There is also classification with only reflection symmetry. Um, and uh, now that we can examine examine this uh, more closely. Uh, in one dimension, we take out part of the sequence uh, for uh, one dimension. It looks something like this. Uh, and there's several terms that we already know. For instance, zero-dimensional SPD without symmetry has a trigger classification. Uh, same for one dimension. Uh, and now for one dimension with translation and reflection, we have a Z2 square classification. Uh, and there's a very neat construction by uh, Chengdu and Wang, which looks like this, where uh, each box is a site. And uh, these pairs are uh, entangled pairs like that. And they have different quantum numbers under reflection. Uh, Likewise, uh, if we only have reflection symmetry, we have a Z2 classification. This is given by, uh, according to Song Huang Hermity, by can be constructed by just putting like a quasi zero D object on the reflection, uh, on the reflection point. Uh, so because there are two copies of this thing, uh, this this term here uh, ends up being Z2 squared, uh, and if you are uh, familiar with exact sequence, you see that exactness checks out here in 1D. Uh, we can do similar things in higher dimensions. Uh, in D equals 2, uh, we know these two terms are trivial according to known results. So by exactness, we can deduce that the term in between them uh, must be 0 as well. Uh, physically, the statement would be there is no non-trivial 2D bosonic SPD phase with the translation and reflection symmetry, uh, which is consistent with 
uh, general dimensional reduction argument. Uh, for 3D, we can do very similar things. Uh, we have two trivial terms. Uh, and here, 2D non symmetry, we have a Z classification, which is given by uh, the E8 phase. Uh, 3D with reflection symmetry, we have a Z2 square classification, which is which consists of a conventional SPD phase and a 3D EA phase. Uh, so by exactness, we get that the term in between uh, can only be one of the two possibilities. And this is also um, and that's as 3D BSPD phase with translation and reflection is one of these. And this is also consistent with the general dimensional reduction argument. Uh, so that's all. In summary, uh, SPD phases are classified by a generalized cohomology theory. Uh, and mere reactorial sequence can allow us to relate classifications for uh, these three different symmetries. More generally, we, it can allow us to relate uh, space group SPD class 